Hello, students of dynamics. This is Dr. Dan Baker with another lecture in the rigid body motion chapter. Essentially, all chapter long, we've been taking a look at the relative and absolute motions of interconnected bodies that are moving in harmony with each other in constrained motion. And as we're transitioning now into the most complex equations of the chapter, which is out of section 16.8 of the Hibbler textbook, which essentially adds some additional relative terms, including the Coriolis as one of the acceleration terms. And a really good question to answer at this point is when do we need to use this stuff? Or more precisely, how can we tell which problems can use relative velocity and acceleration of two points on the same body, which comes out of Hibbler section 16.5 through Hibbler section 16.7, versus the ones, the equations needed um, with the added slipping term which come out of section 16.8. Okay, so I've written all four equations for both relative velocity and relative acceleration for either two points on the same body, which is these two equations right above here, and then additionally with the added slipping term. Now, you'll notice with these equations that all of them are written relating our point B to point A. Okay, so the order of all of those is exactly the same. That's just to kind of show the parallels between those. Of course, you need to customize whatever equation you're writing um, that's gonna be specific to the problem that you're working on. Uh, another thing to notice on here is that uh, in all these equations, and I'll go ahead and look at the, the one down here at the bottom because it's the most complex, at least, um, what, without the tangent normal split of the acceleration terms, that keep in mind that if we multiply these subscripts, okay, so essentially B is equal to A times P over A times B over P, that as we go through and cancel things out, so A cancels with A, P cancels with P, we're left with B is equal to B, and that has to be true. That's a really strong tool to make sure that you're writing the appropriate equation that's actually going to relate to your system and is going to be solvable and is going to be valid. So you can use that idea that you take the, the product of your subscripts, have to cancel down um, to the same value. All right, so now looking at these extra terms. So when we're talking about extra terms, essentially I'm talking about this term and then these three terms in my acceleration. This final term over here on the right-hand side is actually called the Coriolis acceleration, and I'll cover that explicitly in other videos. So I've pulled together here a number of systems, these are all out of the Hibbler textbook, that essentially could be solved with either the top set of equations with two points in the same body or the bottom set of equations, okay? Now I've actually clustered these purposefully that these top three diagrams can all be solved with the top two equations. We'll talk about why that is, okay? So one thing that we can notice, and we'll zoom into each one of these individually, is that on this one, point C and point B are on the same body. And so if I want to write, write the velocity version of this equation, we can say that the velocity of B is going to be equal to the velocity of A plus the velocity of B relative to A, okay? So two points on the same body. And one key thing, and I'll write this down as I get over to the far right of these, of these diagrams, is that there's direct connections between all moving bodies. Okay, I'll say that again, there's direct connections between all moving bodies. So if you can relate the motion of a system with two points on one body, and then also there's direct connections between all moving bodies, that tells you that you can use these equations from 16.5 to 16.7, okay? Looking at this next system here, we can see on this system, we have again a rigid link which is connecting points A and B. Now B is translating, right? B is sliding along this non-moving bar. All right, I'm gonna highlight that here that this is a non-moving bar. Okay, so we have motion between a moving body, which is AB, and fundamentally a fixed body, 
which is this bar which B is sliding along. So again here we have uh, point A and point B and those are interconnected on one single rigid body and we don't have any motion between two, excuse me, we don't have any slipping between two moving bodies. We do have slipping, but it's between a moving body and a non-moving or a fixed bar. Okay, so once again, equations out of section 16.5 through 16.7. Here again, we could write that VB is equal to VA plus V of B relative to A. Now noting you could also solve this problem with VA is equal to VB plus the velocity of A relative to B. One thing you could do is to jump all the way from O to B, okay? Because those are not two, two points on the same body. And so essentially what happens in this problem is that VA is related to the velocity of O because they're both on the same body, which is this rotating wheel in general plane motion moving across that lower gear phase. Um, but we're gonna incorporate the velocity of the wheel through A, but not through O. Okay, we do need these two points on the same body. Uh, panning over here just a little bit further, now as you look at the two points on the same body, we don't wanna pick A and B because we've got motion going on over here at C that we need to incorporate in the overall equation. Okay, and so on this problem, we're gonna jump between B you don't want to say jump, we're going to go on the, these two points in the same body, between B and C. Once again, there's some slipping going on over here at C, but this is a fixed path. Okay, so while body BC is moving, the path is not. And so that's going to be okay to use our standard relative velocity, relative acceleration equations. So for this one, we could either use the velocity of C is equal to the velocity of B plus the velocity of C relative to B, keeping in mind that our subscripts have to cancel. That's what helps you write this equation. Don't forget your vector arrows above this. This is purely a vector equation, not a scalar equation. We could also write that VB is equal to VC plus the velocity of B relative to C. All right, so that takes care of those three examples. Let me write down these two criteria over here. So we said the first criteria is one. Um, we have, or we can, So for one, we can solve all motion with two points on the same body. And two, there is no slipping between moving bodies. So when we say no slipping, another way we could phrase that, we could say that there are direct connections. All right, so that takes care of our first set of equations, our first scenario, which is these top two equations here out of 16.5 and 16.7. All right, so now with these bottom two equations, we've added fundamentally another relative motion term. I think of these terms quite honestly, I think the best way to think about them is thinking about them, this is gonna be a slipping velocity. And then fundamentally, all three of these down here in the acceleration, we can think of as terms from the slipping acceleration. All right, so the reason we need those slipping terms is that because on these three scenarios here in the bottom set, we now have slipping between 
moving rigid bodies. So we'll go through these one by one. The first one here, we have this red ring, and the red ring is both um, rotating, it has an omega, it's actually speeding up. This thing's moving really fast, six radians per second, and it's speeding up at three radians per second squared. And in addition to that, it has this little collar down here, B, which also has a mass. And that collar is additionally has a velocity moving relative to the red ring. Okay, so the way that we're going to solve these problems is essentially we're going to use this idea of a marker point. Now, this idea of a marker point does not come from the Hibbler textbook. It actually comes from Miriam and Craig. Hibbler likes to use a rotating axis system, and so I'll incorporate that as well if you think you want to use that kind of mentality. So if we take a look at, here is this red ring. There's my marker point P. And let me draw over here on the side my collar. Okay, so now this is collar B. And so fundamentally, the motion in this system is governed by placing this collar over the top of that point P. Okay, so as we solve these problems, point P and point B are going to be instantaneously in the same place. But through time, point B is going to relatively translate away from point P. Okay, so that's going to be this idea of a slipping velocity of B relative to point P. All right, so to write the equation for this system, and once again, I'll just write the velocity equation. Here we would have the velocity of B. Now I'll say a hint on these is I always choose the point which is essentially adjacent to my marker point. I'm gonna choose point B for the left-hand side of my equation. So there's gonna be VB. In this case, we would have um, VA plus the velocity of P relative to A plus the velocity of B relative to P. So once again, all these subscripts would cancel out if we multiplied them through. A cancels with A, P cancels with P, where that's with VB is equal to VB. Now, one convenient thing on this problem is that we end up having a zero velocity at point A because point A is this fixed axis pin on the top of the wheel. All right, so for the next body here, now we have two rigid links and some slipping going on between those, okay? So the slipping is happening between C and that body underneath, so right underneath there. And so drawing with the end of this member here, which is AB, we'll just go ahead and cut it off at this point. So we said this is point B. So underneath this collar, we'll say there is a marker point P. And then we'll have this collar, which is pinned. That's point C. So grabbing a hold of this. We can make all this work. Collar C is sitting on top of point P. Okay, so that's the, the general arrangement. And we can think of P is just a marker point. It's just the location of C currently. And as this system moves, P and C, in this case, will depart from each other. So to write this relative velocity equation, we're going to put this body here, which is adjacent to point P, on the left-hand side. So we would have VC is equal to... Now this, again, we're going to go essentially between point A to P. Okay, so if you're wondering, like, why don't you use point D here... As you think about VC, C is in fixed axis rotation around D, right? D isn't moving. And so essentially you're incorporating the motion which is zero of point D by just adding in the velocity there of point C. So here again, we'll write this as the velocity of A plus the velocity of P relative to A, keeping in mind that A is up here on the upper left-hand side of this member AB and P sits on that same body, right? So we could do a position vector there from A down here to P. So this would be my R of P relative to A, which corresponds to this velocity. 
and then we would have our final slipping velocity, our velocity of c relative to p. All right, now for this third scenario, this one is a little bit more complicated motion just because we have a wheel here, which is a non-slip wheel due to this gear, has a contact point down here at the bottom, no slip contact point. And now once again, we have motion two moving bodies, okay, body OB and this body over here AB. Now B here technically, as I would define it, is going to be a pin, a spot, which is connected to the wheel. And I'm going to put a point P, which is adjacent to B. I'm going to put that on body AB. Okay, so what that could look like, we'll just draw the, the upper left end of this. So here is my slot. So I've cut this member off here. And so the current location of B is going to be, now let me just kind of ghost this one up over the top, putting it kind of there on both sides, just saying, hey, point P, which is this marker point on the body that has the slipping or the slot in it, is going to be adjacent to point B. Okay, so for this system, once again, we could write the equation that says our velocity of B and I'm using that because it's adjacent to point P, is equal to the velocity of A. Now again, I'm using A because as I look at the motion of B, now the velocity of P relative to A plus the velocity of B relative to P. And again, the velocity at A here would go to zero. But I did want to emphasize that on the right-hand side of this equation now, you need to make sure that your point A and your point P are on the same body, okay? The only term that can handle points on different bodies is this slipping term right here, okay? Now, let me review that real quickly as I go back. So again, A and P have to be on the same body. So here's A. Here's P, those are both on body APC. And then my slipping term here goes between bodies. And then back one more, again, A and P are on the same body, the fixed axis pin here and the marker point down underneath that collar. And then the slipping term goes between bodies. Okay, so that's why I call it that slipping velocity. Now, the reason I'm using the velocities versus the accelerations, for one, the velocity is an easier equation to write out, but the order of the subscripts is going to be exactly the same, whether you use a velocity equation with slipping or whether you have an acceleration equation with slipping, okay? We would just essentially take each one of these terms and would break each one out into a tangent, a normal, and it turns out for the slipping, we get, I call it the bonus acceleration, we get a Coriolis. So just to make sure I get added the text that I've said in words, we need our slipping terms when there is slipping. between moving bodies. All right, so we need those slipping terms in both the velocity and acceleration equations when there is slipping between moving bodies. All right, the last thing I wanted to add on to here before I go is just to show this idea of a moving coordinate system on these types of problems. It turns out that our point P is the origin of that moving coordinate system. Okay, so I could call this X prime and Y prime, which are coming out of point P. Now I could do that on all three of these systems here, showing here also that out of point P comes my X prime and my Y prime. And again, on this third problem, out of point P comes my x prime and y prime. 
And so in that construct, this last term here, which I've called this slipping motion, can also be written, say, the velocity um, relative to a, think about this as like relative to x prime, y prime, right? So if we establish that moving coordinate system on point P, we can think that in this case, collar B is going to slip away from that moving coordinate system. Okay, so either construct works, either a reference point, which for my money is the easiest thing to think about, or additionally, you could think about a moving relative coordinate system. I hope that helps get you thinking about and contrasting these different equations, thinking about when you need one versus when you need the others. And I hope you're having a really great day today.